farmer people welcome to seeds and holes today i will be sharing with you seven special tips for growing perfect pot choy Tip number one on the list, pick the right spot. First things first, in colder regions, pak choy must be planted in full sun and in warmer climates, partial shade, just like this coconut tree provides to my raised bed. This is very important for maintaining the temperature of the soil. Pak choy really wants the soil to be cool in order for it to perform to its best. And when the time does get hot and temperatures rise too high, pak choy is well prone to bolting which basically means that it goes to seed early. So it starts growing up, 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 up in this vertical sprout, producing flowers and seeds. And the result of this is that the pak choy will not be edible. So that will be very bad for the harvest. And it's not only pak choy that this affects, but other vegetables as well, like lettuce, broccoli, and stuff like that. So this is one that you can apply to other areas of the garden, especially for all of you summer gardeners out there. Be sure to pick the right spot and Tip number two, nutrients which your plants get essentially from the soil. Now, pak choy can be classified as a heavy feeder, so go ahead and add plenty of rich compost and organic fertilizer, always keeping in mind nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Tip number three, moisture retention. Now, if you've ever had pak choy before, you'd recognize that the vegetable actually has a high water content. Thus, as the growers, we have to also give it sufficient water. Now we're not trying to make a swamp in our garden and it really doesn't need a swamp. Just water generously. Also taking in consideration the climate in which you live. So considering temperature, water generously for proper moisture retention. Tip number four, start seeds in a controlled environment. Now most people tend to do this inside the house, in a greenhouse, in a germination chamber slash box slash ark, which is basically just a secure environment that facilitates all the conditions necessary for perfect germination. And currently I am working on a germination ark. As soon as that video is released, I'll have a link in this description so you guys can go ahead and see how I made that really simple, really easy, and it will do your world of good. Now, the reason why starting seeds in such an environment is so important, mature plants will be able to tolerate way more extreme conditions than smaller plants would. And that is kind of obvious, right? It's just like the way we treat babies different from how we treat older human beings. So it's just smart to start the seeds and keep them in such an environment until they're old enough to go out into the garden. So let's fill up this seed tray and start our seeds. So the brand of seeds that I'll be planting today is Lewis Scott. The variety I believe it is is Tropical White. Yeah. And I'm just going to go ahead and read the bag for you because it does come with a lot of information. So it says, can be grown year-round on a wide range of soils. The crop tolerates heavier soils well once there is enough humus and fertilizer. pH should be above 6 to sustain good growth. Now it says that it can be grown year-round and for us in Jamaica it can. I do not know how that would go for persons living in colder regions. Let me know in the comments if you've ever tried to grow pop choy in through winter or stuff like that how it works out and it says the regular sowing depth quarter inch germination four to six days now i planted some earlier and they actually sprouted in like three days and those that i put in the paper towel sprouted in, sprouted in like two days and days to maturity 30 to 40 days so let's go ahead and plant our seeds do that and these seeds have a bright blue color i'm not sure what they coated them in but kind of looks nice. I hope it's healthy and organic. Now. Thank you. 
14 and Pastor Robert Ryan. Only as we conform and obey that we will have rest. Heavenly Father, then God saw their work fighting through repentance. While Jonah had been preaching, the Holy Spirit must have been hard at work in the hearts of the Ninevites. The Ninevites did not have the benefit of all the stories of God's tender leading that the Israelites now tip number five is spacing now our recommended spacing is 10 to 12 inches apart other sources have different spacing requirements however I encourage you to give these plants as much space as you can of course without giving them too much because this is so important for two reasons a as the plants grow older they need they pull more nutrients from the soil and if they're too closely planted then they'll have to contest for nutrients and we don't want that and b if there were to be god forbid an infection of if one of the plants were to get infected and they are closely planted it could easily transfer that to other plants and other plants and other plants and easily destroy the whole batch but if they have sufficient spacing and there's good airflow between the plants then that is least likely to happen tip number six is one of my favorite companion planting as your plants grow older, they'll come to face new challenges of which cabbage worm can be a big part for these vegetables. But thankfully, companion planting is a method of growing crops together that will help to support each other so they have good symbiotic relationship. In this case, growing crops like marigold, celery, thyme, along with your pak choy is a great way to protect these plants as the scent from these crops will help to repel those cabbage pests and hopefully reduce the need to use unhealthful chemicals. And finally, tip number seven. Now this one comes in at around harvesting time and it's CCA harvesting, which basically just means cut and come again. So it's a simple method of harvesting your pak choy or other vegetables in a way that allows you to get more. So basically what you do is you cut the outer leaves and harvest those first and allow the inside to grow and keep sending out more leaves, which will over time mature and you cut those off and it keeps sending out more. So instead of just cutting the whole plant, all at once this is a smart way to maximize your harvest by using the cut and come again method i'll put a link in the description of a simple cut and come again guide so you can learn the proper way to do that so this is what our plants look like shortly after germination unfortunately some of them got a bit leggy which i went ahead and corrected so do watch my video on how to prevent and correct leggy seedlings and here are our seedlings on the tissue paper which germinated in just two days. Let me go ahead and open the bag so that we can see this better. there you have it seven special tips for growing the perfect pak choy thank you so much for watching please remember to like and subscribe to help me to reach my goal i hope you keep coming back to seeds and hold for more informative content bye